Wisconsin Broadcasters Association Hall of Famer Bob Berry ruled Milwaukee's airwaves in the 60s and 70s. He spoke with countless musicians and celebrities over the years. Bob collected remarkable recordings of these encounters, which he's now sharing with the public. Here's Bob. Richard Dorian Goodman, known as Dickie Goodman, was an American music and record producer. He was best known for his technique of using clips of records to answer questions posed by Dickie and his assistant. His hits included The Flying Saucer, Mr. Jaws, and The Touchables. Some record labels sued Goodman for copyright infringement. In the end, the court called it satire, and they dropped the suit. Dickie also mentions how these records came about and what it took to put them together. Right now, you're going to hear a sample before the interview. Uh, this is John Cameron, Cameron downtown. Uh, pardon me, madam, would you tell our audience what would you do if the saucer were to land? Duck in the hell! Thank you. Uh, the gentleman with the guitar, what would you do, sir? Would you take a walk down the wooden street? Thank you. I return you now. Dickie Goodman's on the air with us. Bob Berry Calls the World, originator of all those great novelty records. Now, of the many, many songs that you recorded, uh, Dickie, which was the first? I had a thing back in 56 called The Flying Saucer. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that uh, well. And uh, then you had The Touchables in Brooklyn and Santa and The Touchables and Ben Crazy and Batman and His Grandmother and On Campus and Luna Trip. And, and, and uh, we had, um, I had the um, uh, energy crisis. Oh, yeah, right. The energy crisis. What gave you the idea to do this? Uh, the first one, I, don't, I, I forget exactly how it came about, but I remember when something like this, I think that all of a sudden we figured, gee, wouldn't it be funny if something started to be interrupted by reports of a flying saucer and then a record came in telling the lines and back and forth. So I was with this other fellow at the time. We started to put it together, and it sounded a little bit funny to us. We weren't sure, and that was it. And every big company in the business turned us down, so we had to put it out ourselves. Now, you mentioned a lot of people, and, uh, you know, sometimes uh, they're really not uh, complimentary <laughs> things that come out. Have you had any problems with any of the persons that you've used? No, so far I haven't. I've been lucky, because I know once in a while the lines aren't too, <laughs> but we haven't had any problems so far. Now, were you involved, uh, you don't have to answer this if you don't want to, but uh, I heard that you were involved in some kind of a lawsuit because you used too many bars of one song. Well, a long time ago, there were a couple of people that started to sue and that, and then they found out that, well, it just doesn't make any sense because we're really allowed to do it, because now we make sure that we do is very, very little. I see. Is there a certain amount of bars uh, that you're going to make? As long as it's just short enough where nobody can confuse it with the original record. Nobody could say, hey, isn't that that record? This way it goes by so quick that everybody thinks, well, they know it's something different. You know, it's not really Elton John's record or whoever it is. How long does it take to put one of these things together? About, in the studio, it's about eight or ten hours of editing. It may not seem like it because the thing goes by so fast, but it takes time changing it and getting it tighter and tighter. Yeah, right. That's that's the thing. You, I notice there's never an overlap or anything, that uh, never a little blip or anything in there. You, you, got, it, you got it all clean, right. How many people do you have working on one like this? Um, a couple. There's usually myself and another engineer. Well, that's great. Keep the, the overhead down. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you write these things now, how do you how do you start putting it together? You either go through all the song titles of the popular songs that are out now? Or? Right, that's exactly it. I go through all the songs, and I try to figure which lines might be funny or mix, which lines might fit the situation. And, um, I mean, like in this thing, I mean, there are a few things. There are a couple of lines I know that, that stuck in my mind that came up first. And I just started to go through it, and before you know it, you have a story around it. Right, fine, Biggie. Listen, nice talk to you. Thanks a whole lot. Bro. Okay, thank you. Right, bye-bye. Bye. There you go. Sticky Goodman. What do you think of him? He's a real nowhere man. We're here at a Bob Berry program here in Milwaukee. Bob, what have you got to say about inflation? What I'm going to do is hard to tell. Bob Berry. Thank you for listening to Bob Berry's Unearthed Interviews. Be sure to subscribe and rate our podcast on iTunes or wherever you find your podcasts. You can find all the episodes at wisconsinbroadcastingmuseum.org. Check out Bob Berry's book, Rock and Roll Radio Milwaukee. Book sale proceeds support Angels Kids Fund and Donate Life Wisconsin. The preceding program was made possible by a generous contribution from Terry Bond.